bank does not deals only with money but also with the liquid asset bank of hindustan it had established in calcutta during that time the calcutta was the capital of india when they introduced the banking system all the financial transaction in the italy was happening by sitting in a table first governor of rbi that is the sir osborne smith hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all i am mr hemant kumar from the department of commerce and management vidyashram first grade college mysuru the temple of excellence this is session 1 of the subject banking law and practice for first semester bcom students here we are going to start with the unit 1 of banking law and practice that is introduction to banking this is the agenda of today's session we are going with the meaning and definition of banking the history of banking the evolution of banking in india here we are going to cover three concept meaning of bank bank is a financial institution as we know bank is a financial institution it is not a non financial institution hence it is a financial institution that deals with the money and its substitute bank does not only deals with the money but also it deals with the liquid assets so hence it is it deals with the money and its substitutes and provides other money related services it does not provide only the financial services and also it provide the money related services for the benefit of its customers which function is to accept the deposit and lend the loan to the general public so it is going to accept the deposit and also it is going to lend the loan to the public bank provide a safe place to store extra cash hence it plays a role of the financial intermediary so as we know its function is to collect the deposit from the general public and also to lend the loan to the general public and hence we can say that it act as a financial intermediary in the society the word bank is derived from the italian word that is banco which means a bench or a money exchange table so the word bank is derived from the italian word that is banco means the meaning of banco is in italian word it is a bench where the financial transaction is going to happen so earlier the bank was named as banco after that it was renamed as a bank definition of banking according to the section 5b of the banking regulation act 1949 banking is defined as accepting what it is going to accept it is going to accept the deposit of money from whom it is going to accept from the public it is going to accept the deposit of money from the public what is the intention of accepting the deposit purpose of lending or investment it is going to accept the money from the general public in the intention of the lending the loan to the general public or in the intention of the investment repayable on demand or otherwise so as we know in a bank there are various kinds of account starting from the savings account fixed deposit account current deposit account there are various kinds of account that the customer are going to open in a bank so the amount that the customer had deposited in the bank will be returned to the customer on the demand of the customer or otherwise so there are certain kind of deposit which cannot be encashed easily for example recurring deposit account fixed deposit account so this amount can be withdrawn only after the maturity means there are few kinds of account where we cannot encash the deposit amount easily best example is recurring deposit account and the fixed deposit account these kinds of deposit we can encash only after the maturity so hence we can say that repayable or demand or otherwise and withdrawable by check draft or otherwise so we can withdraw the money by using the check demand draft or the otherwise like there are various online mode to withdraw the money like digital banking or the various kinds of the online application to withdraw the money i repeat accepting the deposit of money what it is going to accept the deposit of money from the public from whom the bank is going to accept the deposit of money 
from the general public what is the intention of collecting the money from the general public in the intention of lending or investment it is going to lend the money to the customer or it is going to make the investment repayable on demand so based on the demand of the customer it is going to repay the amount that is deposited by the customer in the bank or otherwise there are few accounts which cannot be easily encashed that is a fixed deposit account or the recurring deposit account withdrawable by check draft or otherwise the cash can be withdrawn by the customer by using the check by the draft or any other online mode history of banking in india the credit of banking system must go to italians because the italians are the one who had introduced the banking system for the first time and also the word bank is derived from the italian word that is banco which means the table where the financial transaction it is going to happen so as we know the italians they had introduced the banking system for the first time so when they introduced the banking system all the financial transaction in the italy was happening by sitting in a table for that reason they had given a standard name called banco to the banking system so that the banco means it is a table where the financial transaction is going to happen and also the first bank in the world had started in the italy that is the saint george in 1407 this is the picture of the saint george that is located in italy it had established in 1407 evolution of banking system in india here in the evolution of banking system they had divided the system into three categories phase one phase two and phase three in phase one it is a pre-independence era or pre-independence phase that is from 1786 to 1947 so phase two that is the post-independence phase from 1947 to 1991 phase three that is the phase of the liberalization privatization and the globalization that had started from 1991 till today i repeat this evolution of banking system we have classified into three categories phase one phase two and phase three phase one is the pre-independence era or pre-independence phase phase two that is the post-independence phase phase three that is the phase of liberalization privatization and globalization in 1770, the first Indian bank was established, that is Bank of Hindustan. It had established in Calcutta. During that time, the Calcutta was the capital of India and it was established by the Europeans. So, it was not purely the Swadeshi bank, hence this bank was established by the Europeans. And also later due to some problems that bank was closed. It had started its operations in India on 1832. In 1862, 1842, three banks had established in India in three major cities that is Bank of Bengal, Bank of Madras and Bank of Bombay. So these banks was established by the charter of the East India Company in India. And 1921, the three banks collaborated together and form a new bank that is the Imperial Bank of India. I repeat, in 1921, three banks that is Bank of Bengal, Bank of Bombay and Bank of Madras collaborated together and form a new bank called the Imperial Bank of India. This is a picture of the Imperial Bank of India and after the nationalization, the Imperial Bank of India was renamed as the State Bank of India in 1955. I repeat, three major banks of India, that is Bank of Bengal, Bank of Bombay and Bank of Madras was renamed as the Imperial Bank of India and after the nationalization in 1955, it was named as the State Bank of India. In 1921, there are various kinds of banks had established and before independence, there was 600 banks that is established and there are few banks among 600 banks that is running today. That is the Allahabad Bank which is established in 1865, Punjab National Bank established in 1894, the Bank of India established in 1906, Bank of Baroda 1908, Central Bank of India 1911. Later in 1935, the Reserve Bank of India was established on 
ఫస్ట్ ఏప్రిల్ నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఫైవ్ ఇన్ అకార్డెన్స్ విత్ ద ప్రొవిజన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద రిజర్వ్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా యాక్ట్ నైన్టీన్ థర్టీ ఫోర్ విత్ ద ఫస్ట్ గవర్నర్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్బీఐ దట్ ఈస్ ద సర్ ఆస్బోన్ స్మిత్ so sir osborn smith was the first governor of reserve bank of india the present governor of reserve bank of india is shaktikant das so after phase 1 this is the phase 2 that is the post independence era or the post independence phase that is from 1947 to 1991 here after the independence all the major banks of india was led privately so what happened as we know they had established more than 600 banks before the independence so all the banks had that is established before the independence had led privately which was cause of the concern as a people belonging rural across were still dependent on the money lenders for the financial assistance so during that period what happened all the banks were led by the private people and most of the times what happens so the rural people were depending on the money lenders who are available in their village so that was the system that was following in this era later what happened with an aim of solving this problem the government had decided to nationalize the banks so here to solve the problem of the rural people the government started to nationalize the bank so that it will be beneficial for the rural people this bank was nationalized by the banking regulation act 1949 under which act the banks were nationalized it was nationalized under the banking regulation act 1949 in 1969 the government of india nationalized the reserve bank of india under the provisions of the banking regulation act 1949 in 1969 the reserve bank of india was also nationalized under the banking regulation act 1949 and also the banking regulation act 1949 gave the authority to the reserve bank of india to issue the license for the commercial banks or the financial institutions so that the reserve bank of india is known as the bankers bank so under the phase 2 the 14 banks were nationalized in 1969 that is the allahabad bank the bank of india bank of baroda bank of maharashtra Central Bank of India, Canara Bank, Dena Bank, Indian Overseas Bank, Indian Bank, Punjab National Bank, Syndicate Bank, Union Bank of India and United Bank and UCO Bank. In 1980, another six banks was nationalized totally. Earlier in 1969, 14 banks was nationalized and in 1980, another six banks was nationalized totally. 20 banks were nationalized during this era that is andhra bank corporation bank new bank of india oriental bank of comom punjab and sind bank and vijaya bank in 1982 the nabard was established to develop or to support the agriculture and rural sector in india in 1982 the exim bank was established that is the export import bank of india to support the import and export of the nation in 1988 the national housing board was established to promote the housing project for the development of our nation in phase 3 what happened the government of india invited the private investors to invest in india so after 1991 the government of india had invited the private investor to invest on india to establish the banks in india there are various private banks that is established in india some banks are still operating its operations that is the global trust bank icici bank hdfc bank axis bank bank of punjab induced bank central bank idbi bank times bank and the development credit bank so in the third phase the banks started operated by the reserve bank of india whatever the things whatever the decision that is taken by the banks that must be operated or that must be controlled by the reserve bank of india the banks started following the norms that is given by the reserve bank of india the reason is reserve bank of india is known as the bankers bank the banking regulation act 1949 gave the reserve bank of india the authority to issue the license for the general bank and also it must control all the banks which 
all the financial institution whether it is a private sector whether it is a public sector banks the government had invited the private investors to invest in the india as a effect 10 private banks were established few of them are still in existence so as a effect of the india had invited the private investors to invest in india there are 10 banks that had established in india as i show so there are 10 banks that is established in india there are few banks that is in existence today that is axis bank hdfc and icici bank kotak mahendra inducent bank yes bank and the hdfc and bandhan bank so in next session we are going with the concept of objectives of bank and the banking in gift city these are the topics that we are going to discuss in next sessions thank you